How do you think people view you? It depends on what I'm wearing. I'm gay. Through their eyes. It, I'm really goofy, stupid, not really stupid, but clumsy in a way. Sexy. <sighs> do you think people judge you more based off of your appearance or your actions? Actions. My appearance for sure. Actions? Looks, 100%. I think everyone judges people off looks. When people look at you, what do you think they see? I've been told I have an RBF. Kind of a weirdo. A 6'1 white guy. A queer person. These are deep questions. Kind of like Santa Claus. Before getting started, quick shout out to Timothy Dang for inspiring this video. How do you think people view you? I think a lot of people just like look right through me. You know, a lot of people just like, I, I kind of blend in with the crowd. I don't think a lot of people really notice me. They usually kind of see me as someone who as they're kind of their rock if they need to like hit me up for if they need help with anything, like oh, if they need a ride somewhere. Uh, so you're dependable. Oh yeah. You love those friends. That's going to depend on the person, right? I think my mom would view me as a sweet angel. My dad would be maybe a pain in the ass sometimes, but I think Tell my homies how they perceive me as a good dude. Your homies think you're a dog? I would think so. I got that dog in me too. <laughs> Usually they view me as bubbly. Bubbly? Yes. Why? Alcohol. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> how do people view you? Um as a nice human, I hope. Fat and generally happy, so kinda of like Santa Claus. How do people view you? I don't know, but I think about that a lot, honestly. Um, especially as a mom, you know, you get a lot of criticism from other people. A lot of the times they tell you how you should do things, so. I think for me, it's changed a lot over time. I used to be an athlete, so my whole life it was, he's a jock, where now I am very vulnerable and people see that pretty quickly when they meet me. Do you ever see that backfire? being vulnerable? Never. It never does. I, I think it's a mistake to think that it does. And I think you should never think of vulnerability as a weakness at any point because if you were being vulnerable with somebody and they took advantage of that, they show their cards and then you can see them as somebody that you can back up off of. So never, ever, ever not be vulnerable because you're afraid of your vulnerability being a weakness and being taken advantage of, ever. Do you think you code switch with people? So you like present different versions of yourself to, depending on who you're with? All the time, yeah. No, do you do that too? Uh, yeah, obviously, all the time. You, you, can't, you can't say like bad shit in front of like Asian grandmas or something, you can't. Don't fucking laugh. This is <laughs> it's how it is. It's how no, it is. no, I've heard. I've heard. Yeah. It's how it is. Like you gotta like switch it up. Like when you're around certain like old people, you gotta be chill. Have a good one. Like around, <laughs> like see, like around old people, you gotta be like you know like proper and have good etiquette. And then around your homies, you could just fuck around without a single problem. Say whatever the hell you want. Actually, I knew this kid in middle school who's, who, was, who had a real problem with code switching, who kept saying, uh, I have like five different friend groups and I'm a different person in every friend group. Yes, all the time, all the time. I'm, I'm an elementary school teacher. So, so it's kind of built into the... It's built in a little bit. Not that I have some se crazy secret identity that I'm hiding, but um, at the same time, you do go into teacher mode versus uh, who you are as an individual mode. You know, you might let a few of the not so nice words slip when you're uh, uh, not in teacher mode and you have to really just remind yourself of what your audience is when you're with them. Do you think you present different versions of yourself to different people? Oh, for sure. I work in retail, okay? You know, and... I'm an introvert, just like my best friend. But uh, when you do certain things where you have to play to people, uh, it's like a play, really. You know, you gotta be nice and just go, really? In the back of your mind, when they pull up something, you're like, uh, that's not how that works, but okay. <laughs> Who do you think sees the real you? I think God. My wife, for sure. Jesus, God. God, if that's not too corny, God. I don't know if any, if any person on earth really, um, knows who I really am. They say you have like three masks, right? So one that you show everybody, um, one that you show yourself, and then the one that you can't take off, right? So I think that one you can't take off is like the real you. Uh, I don't think I even can see the real me, you know? I'm not like a very metaphysical or like uh, religious kind of person. Like some people could say that God sees the real you and that's like that purity at the essence of your soul, but I'm not too sure. Uh, I don't think anybody does. I wonder if anyone sees the real me. I, I don't think there is a real me. I think I'm actually, like all of us, a kind of collection of, of, of people or processes or up in the skull, uh, you know, three to five trillion synapses in your brain. They're like 
conventions of very large numbers of, of organizations in conflict with one another, um, and they end up accounting for all the stuff that we do. Who sees the real version of me? The homies, dude. The homies see me. Like, oh, I remember one time. Oh God, I remember one time I was a, uh, I was on Discord with my boy, and my dad came home. And he just kept hearing me like cuss upstairs and like say like the most bad stuff and like he came back from work because he forgot something and then the next morning he's like who are you talking to who are you talking to because you were saying some bad shit i'm like damn <laughs> you were saying you were cussing like a storm i'm like yeah yeah i was with the boys when people look at you what do you think they see i don't know uh so i'm an engineer so typically when i present myself to people it's usually in that regard so Maybe like a smart slash nerdy person, I guess, yeah. And do you think you ever uh, present different versions of yourself to different people in your life? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, just because it makes sense to sometimes. You know, any every, every relationship requires an interface that maximizes utility, you know? When people look at you, what do you think they see? A queer person? I don't know. A, a man? Yeah. Right? Yeah, probably, yeah. There's no wrong answer. Yeah, I think so, yeah. How do you wish people saw you? A queer man, yeah. How do people misunderstand you? I'm a huge talker. I love to talk. It's like uh, one of my favorite things to do. Is that why you're the star? That's why you sat down? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. Uh, you got that right, Jack. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would say so. But um, I think that people like view me as just like a talker and like that I don't listen to often. But it's like I, I try my best. I just I talk a lot. I like to get my opinion out as much as I can. That's, it's, it's important to me to let it be known what I'm thinking. What are like some misconceptions that people have about you? Misconceptions? Um, I got this twice in this past week. Uh, two people asked me if I had a girlfriend and I'm gay. So it, like coming across as like more masculine presenting. Um, it's, it's like interesting whenever they're assuming that like I like girls or they're asking me about a girlfriend or something like that and I have to say no and then they start talking about girls and I'm like yeah like for, sh like for sure like I just kind of like nod along you know what I mean it's not like they're gonna ask me what my sexuality is but it's just like a misconception yeah going along what we said earlier do you wish that people saw you as uh, I don't know if this is the right terminology but like gay passing instead of straight passing is that right no uh, yeah well I don't do you just like kind of accept it or do you with it you know what I mean yeah it's it's cool whatever you like whatever you think that I am it's more interesting to hear what other people think that I am than it is to like explain to them that this is the way that I am you know what I mean because like it does, at the end of the day it doesn't matter right if I'm dating a guy or if I'm dating your girl like uh, you're just trying to have a conversation right so I'll just go along with the conversation right it doesn't really matter unless they're interested in me and then it's a whole other thing you know what I mean do you see people who might not talk in the best light about others because of that oh like have I ever seen somebody who's like over, like homophobic and like talking to me? yes yeah um, it's happened it's happened with my dad before right or like other people I know too in the gay community it's happened with like their parents and they're not out to them yet you have to be a, I guess a, a type certain type of person to make those outward judgments towards people you know what I mean it's always like a reflection of like how you feel about yourself if somebody is making those towards me it's kind of just like ironic right it's not it's nothing different though than like who they would be towards somebody else you know when people look at you what do you think they see I honestly don't know I hope they see a I want to say a bad bitch but I don't know if I can say um, I don't know. I hope they just see somebody that they can be themselves with, honestly. What do you think some misconceptions are that people have about you? Um, they probably see my hair and they think I'm some, like, crazy, I don't know, weird lady. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what people think about me. I think sometimes when they see me, maybe they think, like, I don't know. I think about my weight a lot, especially after having a child. It's really hard to see yourself in a new light when you've looked one way for so long and then your whole body is different and I think it just kind of changes how you feel about yourself too. I think I get typecast as somebody who's just uh, a mom, like I'm a, I'm a mother of two, so I think I, uh, my identity sometimes get, gets lost in that identity or that part of my, uh, you know, um, a part of who I am but it, there is so much more to me and I think that that sometimes I just need to remind myself to bring that part of me out some more. Did I ask you if uh, you ever feel misunderstood? Misunderstood? I do okay so I uh, becoming a teacher is a second uh, it's a career change for me uh, I used to be an immigration attorney before that 
So I think there's a lot of misunderstanding for why, I get a lot of why would you leave what people consider a prestigious career and then restart your career in another field that pays you significantly less. But life is short, you know, like you don't want to live your life hating what you're doing or feeling like you uh, are going to live in regret in any which way. So I have many more years of my work life to, ahead of me, so why do something I hate? When people look at you, what do you think they see? What do you think? What do I think? Yeah. You seem like a pretty friendly guy, like you came up, you were like curious, and I always appreciate curiosity because then I, you know, it's like a, you bypass people who are like, oh, don't ask me a question, you know, and uh, pretty energetic, but I mean, we're getting to know each other right now, right? Right, absolutely. <laughs> do you think people see you as you see yourself? Uh, no, man, uh, probably not. I come from, the way I view myself is kind of, kind of from a, more of a negative place, it's just kind of how I, it, it's really unhealthy and frankly toxic, but um, I always find myself in a state of improvement, and I don't let people know that, you know, I mean, of course you want to put your best foot forward, you want to have the best image of yourself out in the open, but, um, you know, we all know our inner flaws, we all know our, our opportunities for growth, and I, I see that when I look myself in the mirror instead of maybe the image of what people think of me. You are your own biggest critic. That's absolutely correct. Everyone else only sees like a couple episodes in your entire show, That's right? right? All like 80 seasons of your life, you live every single minute. Oh, yeah. Everyone else just sees like maybe a couple seasons, maybe they're in it for the long haul, but yeah. They don't know the bonus content, they don't know the deleted scenes, they don't know the DLC, they, ain't got, <laughs> they, don't, have, they don't have that stuff. This past year, I've talked to hundreds of strangers in countless scenarios, and every single time I talk to them and ask them deep questions, I've slowly become more empathetic. All right, there are exceptions. Obviously, there are exceptions. Meow. It's not everybody. You can't be everybody. You can't have empathy for everybody. Meow. The goal of these table interviews is not to push a narrative or polarize or just be humorous, but instead, I want to have a format where you can openly talk about different issues and different groups of people to try and build empathy for them, because that's what I've done. I dubbed this the Empathy Podcast, but then my friend pointed out to me that this looks eerily similar to somebody who, after doing research, I definitely don't want to associate with. So let me know what I should name this format when trying to discuss difficult topics with empathy in mind. Y'all, I need help. I've hit a roadblock with what I'm supposed to call this. What are some misconceptions people have about you? I feel like a lot of people think I have like a lot of anxiety, like all the time. Maybe I have anxiety like 30% of the time. Are you sure it's not like 31? No, 30. Exactly 30? Yeah, because like out of 10 days, 7 days I'm good, 3 days I'm bad, you know? Like I keep track, I have a journal. Do you ever feel misunderstood? Mm, actually, yeah. With other gay men, I feel very like I am toxic and miscommunication. Do you think people judge you more on your appearances or uh, your actions? Well, when they first meet me, my appearance, I am cute. My outfits do slay. Rawr. Meow. Um, but my actions, yes. Like I said, I am a little toxic, but at the same time, I'm a little anxious. So I feel like they do judge me on that a lot. Um, I'm sorry if I ever hurt you. I am. <laughs> I, no, genuinely, I am very sorry, but I'm just trying to- We're all figuring it out. Huh? We're all figuring it out. Yeah, I'm trying to figure myself out, you know? Like, I am truly sorry. I think, well, I think we ended there. Okay. Huh? That's, I think that's a good closing point, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Make sure you hit the subscribe button right now!